Howdy. I'd like to do something a little bit different today. This is a uh, bow. It's made out of U-wood. Made this about 20 years ago. And uh, I'd like to do a little demonstration to show what a bow and a flake, in this case a flute flake, what they have in common. And uh, both of these things will bend. Both the flute flake or any flake uh, when it's detached from the core as well as the bow. And uh, there's certain conditions that will make uh, it more likely to snap and that's kind of what we want to demonstrate today. On any bow, for those of you who've made bows and have tillered them and taken the width down on the limbs, the thinner you make the limbs, the more bend you will get out of the bow because you weaken it before it actually snaps. If it's real thick, it's going to snap. And when you actually pull a bow back, I haven't really drawn this in uh, about a decade. I made this 20 years ago. What will happen is the back is stretching. As the bow is bending, the back is stretching and the belly is under compression. And at some point, if you exceed the, uh, the normal arrow length or your draw length, the bow can actually snap. That's the same thing that happens on a, uh, on a flake when you remove it from a core. Now I'll give you a better shot at this in a minute. Normally when flakes come off like this, they're, they come off in pieces. They don't typically come off in one long flake like this. This one only broke on the very end. And I'll show you this again here in a minute. Okay, here's another close-up of this particular flute flake. And this particular piece right here was removed uh, with a jig. It was a Cumberland point that I was making. And the flake came off intact, which is kind of rare, although it does happen. This particular piece right here, just for demonstration purposes, happens to be about three millimeters in thickness. And uh, the reason I'm showing that is the thickness of the flake has a lot to do with whether or not it will come off intact. And you might say, well, who cares? You know, It's the flake. It's not the part that I'm keeping. Although it might be if you're detaching flakes for making arrowheads. Uh, but the thinner it is, the more it can bend without flaking. And uh, particularly uh, thick flakes are more likely to fracture and you're not going to get really, really long ones. So what we're going to do here in a minute, we're going to actually bend this thing on a uh, straight board and see how much deflection we get before it actually snaps. I did this once long before, I didn't video it, but I kind of I visually noticed that there was a, a noticeable amount of bend in the flake before it actually fractured. Kind of blew me away. So. These are some examples of flakes from my flake pile and I noticed that obsidian seems to demonstrate these little fractures or little cracks that uh, show up in the rock uh, as a result of the bending that happens when this flake is actually removed from the core. Uh, I hope that shows up in there. You can see these kind of like point back toward the point of initiation. And what I noticed also when I was looking at these is they tend to be a lot more of them out here on the thinner edges uh, of the flake as if that part perhaps bent a little bit more and caused these little fractures. Here's another example. There's cracks running like this, pointing back toward the point of initiation. They kind of radiate out away from uh, the detachment point where it initially started. Here's one of dacite. You can see these lines pretty clearly here. There's even some from the previous flakes on the other side. Boy, the noises are everywhere today. Train, the sirens, tile cutter next door. <laughs> okay, we'll get down to business here. Okay, here we go. I've got the uh, flake on a board here, and I'm going to press down in the middle and bend it just like a bow. And we're going to try and see just how much deflection we get before it snaps. Starting to put a little bit of pressure on it. 
I'm guessing maybe we'll get one or two millimeters. Actually pressing down pretty hard. Continue on like that until we Mostly I want to demonstrate the bending nature of a flake, that rock is flexible and that it uh, will give a certain amount. There we go. Fantastic. Here's just another example, something to think about. But uh, When you're pressure flaking a point, like with the issue stick, and you press down on the back side here of the point of the biface you're doing the same thing you're creating a bending force that can cause the point or the blade to actually uh, exceed its tensile strength and fracture that's why I like to support it on the back edge so you're pushing from one edge to the other and not down if you're going to press down press here and press here press on either side of the bridge or have a narrower a narrower uh, notch in your pad, that helps too. Here's something else to think about. These little fractures in a flake that we uh, noted earlier, these actually weaken the flake. This can be made into a small biface or an arrowhead or a dart point or whatever, but bear in mind that when you're working with a flake, this flake has bent. It's been bent when it was detached from the core and as a result it's not as strong as a rock that you would just uh, start working naturally. In other words it's not as strong as the core itself. So cores will make stronger points and will be less likely to fracture during manufacture. These don't extend in very deep. I mean no doubt not even near a millimeter probably. But uh, in any case they do weaken the point and they can contribute. I've had a lot more flakes like this break on me when I'm pressure flaking them or bifacing them out than I have had with uh, cores. So that's sort of something to think about and uh, that should do it.